live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario. You've been watching your favorite team play every week the entire season. Through all the ups and downs, through all the highs and lows, and through all the trials and tribulations, you've been there, watching every second and cheering them on. And for the first 15 games of the season, that's been exactly what's happened, as you've devoted every Sunday to watching your team play. Now it's week 16 of a 16-game season with no bye weeks. So this is the final game of the season. It's the biggest game your team has played this year, and it's a game that has massive implications on the playoff picture. And when the stakes are at their absolute highest, and when the magnitude of this game is at its absolute importance, the TV network in question decides that they're not going to show the game. You saw the first 15 games? Well, tough luck. You're not seeing game 16. Well, in 1979, that's exactly what happened in Oklahoma City. For Houston Oilers fans across the region, they were getting ready for one of the biggest games in the history of the franchise. And when they turned on their television sets, they found a team that was not the Oilers on their screen. And let's just say that Oilers fans were upset about this decision by the television executives in charge, even though for the most part, this was a case of a TV station having their hands tied and having no control over the matter. This is the story behind the broadcasting controversy involving CBS at the end of the 1979 season. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand the importance of the game in question, and how the Oilers were doing heading into this game to make it all the more important. Through the first 15 weeks of the season, there was no real dominant team setting themselves apart from the rest of the competition, as parity was abound. However, there were three teams tied for the best record in the league at 11-4. One of them was the San Diego Chargers. The second was the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the third, well, that was the Houston Oilers. It was weird because when you look at their point differential, it was only plus 37, which you don't expect for a team that has the best record in football. For perspective, the Chargers were at plus 155, and the Steelers were at plus 126. But 11-4 is still 11-4, and, and after making it to the AFC Championship the previous year, the Oilers were playing some good football, and through 15 weeks, had a playoff spot locked up. The Oilers were picking an incredible time to play their best football of the season. After starting 5-3, they won 6 of their next 7 games, and were coming off of a critical 20-17 victory over their hated rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers, on Monday Night Football. Part of why they were so good was because of a great offense that scored 342 points, which was not only the 6th best total in the league, but was more than every other team in the NFC. And there was one man in particular driving the ship, which was the legendary running back Earl Campbell, who was so good in 1979 that he would go on to win Pro Bowl and First Team All-Pro honors, along with the AP Offensive Player of the Year, and most importantly, the MVP. With 18 rushing touchdowns and 1,563 yards through 15 weeks, he was on pace to have one of the greatest seasons by any running back in the history of the sport, and he crossed the 100-yard mark in 10 out of those first 15 games. The Oilers were a very good team, and with one week left of the season, found themselves playing one of the biggest regular season games in franchise history. Because their final game of the season would be at home at the Astrodome in an interconference matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this game was important for the Eagles as well, as they were 10-5, and, and if the right results happen, they could win the NFC East title, as slim as those hopes may be. Although they had already clinched a playoff spot, as they were actually the first team in the NFL to clinch a spot. But for the Oilers, the importance of this game cannot be overstated. If the Oilers won this game, then they would be 12-4, breaking the franchise record for most wins in a season. On top of that, and perhaps most importantly, if they won this game then they would have a chance to win the AFC Central for the first time in franchise history. The last time they won the division was back in 1967, when they won the AFL East. You can learn more about the bizarre controversy surrounding that title by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But they had never won the AFC Central before, and a win here would ensure that they not only win their first division title since the merger, but host a playoff game for the first time ever at the Astrodome, bypass the wildcard round, and if they're lucky, maybe even get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. It was an absolutely critical game, and I do not say that lightly. 
When you have two teams with a combined record of 21 and 9 entering the final game of the season, two teams who are guaranteed to be playing playoff football, and two teams who are some of the best teams in football playing in a game where there's a lot on the line, you know you're going to be in for a treat. When you looked at the schedule for the final week of the 1979 season, this game was near the top of the list of importance and intrigue. At about six hours north of Houston, or 450 miles, a ton of Oilers fans were getting ready for this one, and were preparing for one of the biggest regular season games in franchise history. Because before we talk about the controversy, we have to talk about the city in question. Because Oklahoma City, with no NFL team to root for, love the Houston Oilers. Where there are markets that are not secondary markets of other teams, and are essentially free agent markets with no ties to any team or any city, that network affiliates basically have free reign to do whatever they want. Obviously, the goal with something like this is to maximize ratings, often with either the best game or a somewhat local team, using the word local extremely loosely. And it was very clear in 1979 that the Houston Oilers were ratings winners in Oklahoma City. When you combine a team that is constantly winning with a team that plays in a city that is one of the closest NFL cities to Oklahoma City, it's easy to see why the Oilers were on TV a lot. And by a lot, I truly mean a lot. Through the first 15 weeks of the season, if you were in Oklahoma City, you could legally watch all 15 Oilers games. Now, some of them, like their Monday Night Football game against the Miami Dolphins and Pittsburgh Steelers, and their Thanksgiving game against the Dallas Cowboys, you were going to get nationally no matter what, so the whole country could watch. But for the other 12 games, where it was up to the affiliates, all 12 times, the affiliate, whether it was CBS or NBC, depending on who the road team was, chose to air the Oilers. That meant that if you were in Oklahoma City, you didn't have to drive to a place where they were showing the game, or go to a bar that knew how to rig the satellites so you could get the game. You could watch it from the comfort of your own home. And it was extremely rare for a market in a completely different state to get every game of the same team. But that just goes to show you how popular the Oilers were in Oklahoma City. So when it was time for week 16 of the season, and when it was time for this critical game, what did Oklahoma City's affiliate decide to do? They decided not to show the game. Now on the surface, this might seem completely ridiculous and unfair. You're telling me Oilers fans in Oklahoma City, who got to watch every single game, won't be able to watch their team play in the last game of the season? However, it's going to make a bit more sense in a bit, because the affiliates' hands were truly tied. Remember that back in 1979, there was no cross-flexing, and there was no flex scheduling with regards to what times the games were held. This meant that once the schedule came out, it was a done deal. And because the Philadelphia Eagles were traveling to the Astrodome for this game, it meant that the game was broadcast by the network that had the NFC package, which in this case, was CBS. So far, no problem. The CBS affiliate had no problem airing the Oilers game that took place in Week 6, which I talked about in a previous video of mine, and another broadcasting controversy that season involving the Oilers and CBS. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But here's where the problem comes in. Because you see, back in 1979, the NFL was incredibly stupid with how they scheduled their games. You would think that they would have a system in place to ensure that two teams in close proximity to each other that share geographical territories cannot play on the same network at the same time. You can't have the Jets and Giants both on CBS at 1 o'clock. You can't have the 49ers and Raiders on NBC both at 4 o'clock, and so on. But nope, because the Eagles-Oilers game was scheduled for a 4 o'clock start. You know what other game was scheduled for a 4 o'clock start? The critical NFC East matchup between Dallas and Washington, where the NFC East title was on the line, and where Washington's playoff hopes were on the line. I'm not going to go too much in depth about this game, even though it was an incredible game, simply because I did a video talking about the chaotic end to the 1979 season, and went through this game in depth. So if you want to learn more about that, click the card in the upper right corner. This meant that the CBS affiliate in Oklahoma City now had the incredibly difficult decision of which fan base they wanted to alienate more. Do we show Dallas play Washington at 4 o'clock? Or do we show Philadelphia play Houston at 4 o'clock Eastern? And when you weigh the pros and cons of each option, since there was no way you could make both sets of fans happy, it was very clear which game was going to be shown. No offense to Oilers fans. Number one, yes, the Oilers were extremely popular in Oklahoma City, as there's no way that you get every game there if they weren't. 
but there was a team that was more popular, and that was the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys were closer, the Cowboys had more historical success, the Cowboys had a larger fan base, especially in Oklahoma City, and the Cowboys were just the bigger draw in every sense of the word. There's a reason why a lot of unaffiliated markets just decide to show the Cowboys, because their fan base is that big. Number two, yes, the Eagles Oilers game was big, but both teams had already clinched the playoff spot. The Dallas Washington game, on the other hand, Washington was fighting for their playoff lives, and Dallas was fighting for the NFC East title, as they would get it with a win. Games for seeding purposes are important, but games for getting into the playoffs, period, are even more important. Fans love to watch the games where a team has to win to make it, because if they lose, they'll go home. It's a true elimination game. Number three, there wasn't any rivalry between Philadelphia and Houston. It was an interconference game, and the two sides had only met once before. When the Eagles defeated the Oilers 18-17 all the way back in 1972, when both teams were among the worst in football and were absolute laughingstocks. No Eagles fan had hard feelings toward the Oilers, and vice versa. Dallas against Washington, on the other hand, might have been the best rivalry in football at the time. To say that the two teams in the same division hated each other would be an understatement, with that hatred only intensifying throughout the 70s and throughout 1979 after their meeting earlier in the season in Week 12, when Washington ran up the score at the end of the game, which Dallas did not take kindly to. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And number four, this was CBS that we were talking about here. CBS had the NFC package, so looking at just the NFC side of things, did people in Oklahoma City care more about the Cowboys or the Eagles? Obviously, it was the Cowboys. In every sense of the word, the Cowboys game was the better option than the Oilers game. The Cowboys had the larger fan base in Oklahoma City, the Cowboys game had higher stakes, and the Cowboys game featured a much better rivalry. So the CBS affiliate in Oklahoma City decided to air the Cowboys game in the final week of the season, keeping the Oilers in the dark. However, even though this was unquestionably the right decision on paper, and I cannot blame the TV networks in Oklahoma City one bit for this debacle, as their hands were completely tied, obviously, people were upset about this. And Jack Salaska, the program director of KWTV, which was the CBS station in Oklahoma City, said as much, saying that it was up to the NFL, and that they had absolutely no control over the situation. But one CBS spokesperson, who was anonymous, was absolutely furious at the NFL for their scheduling. Oklahoma City was a fairly decently sized TV market, and seeing as CBS had the double header that week, it would have been incredible for the ratings if the Oilers played at 1 o'clock and the Cowboys played at 4 o'clock. But because of some incompetent scheduling on the NFL's part, where the Cowboys and Oilers were confined to the same TV network at the same exact time on the final week of the season, the 1 o'clock game, which was a battle between the 8 and 7 New England Patriots, who were mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, and the 7 and 8 Minnesota Vikings, who were also mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, was going to be a complete dud. Nothing like a completely meaningless scheme with no playoff implications on the final week of the season. And the spokesperson wondered a very valid question. Why the heck did the league schedule it like this? As the spokesperson said, we'd have preferred that the league schedule one of the games early so that markets like Oklahoma City could see both teams play. Instead, markets like Oklahoma City had to miss out on the most important game of the season, all because the NFL didn't know how geography and time worked. Fortunately, the decision to air the Cowboys game was the right one. The Oilers-Eagles game was good, as the Oilers lost 26-20 to lose the AFC Central title, and it came down to the final drive. But the game between Dallas and Washington? Well, that was one of the greatest and most iconic regular season games of all time, and I do not say that lightly. It was a classic. Dallas, trailing 34-21 with four minutes left in the fourth quarter, miraculously scored on two touchdown passes courtesy of Roger Staubach, and won the game 35-34 to win the NFC East and eliminate Washington from the playoffs. To this day, more than 40 years later, that game is talked about as one of the greatest regular season games of all time, and one of the greatest finales of all time, and it's not hard to see why. But still, even though the Oilers lost, the loss stung more for fans who couldn't watch their favorite team play after getting to watch them for the entire season. Due to cross-flexing and flex scheduling and just accessibility to out-of-market games in general, 
plus way more confidence on the NFL's part, nothing like this is ever going to happen again. But it definitely had to hurt Oilers fans in Oklahoma City that they were on the outside looking in, not just in the AFC Central hunt, but in the battle for CBS supremacy as well. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.